because I think ultimately we will go to her for our answers and our common ground. And so I, I very much share that philosophy of what you're speaking that, you know, when all is said and done, we're going to have to get close to the ground again and have an image and appreciation and respect for our living earth, whatever our backgrounds are or preferences. Um, mm. that, uh, that we do all have our indigenous roots and can go back and find our ancestors living close to the ground. And I think that's something that's starting to happen. I teach at a university in California, and one of the courses I teach is all about people researching their own indigenosity so that there's a sense of, of them coming home themselves. Mm. And I think, you know, and it's too big of a talk for here, and I raise my hand, and it's just too, too much to bring forth, but I think there's a lot of um, need for people in the Western world to find their identity and then there won't be so much consuming and a sense of taking when you feel full within yourself. And I think that does go back to a need to find one's respect and, and um, integrity and sense of well-beingness in one's own culture, even if it's a mixture of cultures. Mm. And uh, to, to feel that honor, you know, that Celtic people can go back and find when their ancestors honored the land. Mm. And you can, you know, ramify from there. Mm. It's not a lot of time, but I think we each have to find that time when our ancestors were earth people hmm. which is a whole huge topic yes um, a move to share a dream I had which is not exactly answering your last question but maybe indirectly um, I was once in Costa Rica leading a group of, uh, of uh, people um, who were ostensibly to swim with dolphins. And we also, I say ostensibly because the dolphins in Costa Rica were of a very different mindset than dolphins I have swam with in uh, the Bahamas or uh, Hawaii. Um, and they were under siege. They were, they were being trapped in large numbers. So they were not particularly eager to encounter with humans, where my sense anyway in Hawaii and other places is that uh, dolphins do want to bring a message to humans. Um, and, uh, and at the end of a week in Costa Rica, I had a dream in which I, I saw my wife's smiling face, and then I dove down into the ocean, and, and I became a dolphin. And then I went really, really deep, almost to the bottom of the ocean. But before I reached the bottom of the ocean, I became aware that I was a river dolphin and that it was necessary to return to the river. And so I came up toward the surface and then swam. And as I was swimming toward the mouth of the river, my awareness moved up, up to the top of the atmosphere almost. And I still saw the river dolphin swimming toward the mouth of the river. And I was, you know, my awareness was in both places, in the sky and the water. And then I began to see all the rivers that ran toward this place in the ocean. And in Costa Rica, the rivers are full of energy. They're full of prana. It's not like the Rio Grande or, or many of the rivers in all over the world, they're in their full glory. And I felt the beating of the, of the planet's heart. And I saw that the rivers were the ventricles and that were bringing the energy of the heart to the planet. And, I, and, and it just it just was the most beautiful awareness. And I think maybe that some way this is part of 
how we came to maybe conceiving of this oil and water conference because there's there's something about water that must be freed must be pure i don't think it's a coincidence and i've talked with indigenous people about this that at the same time that mother earth's rivers are being dammed and being blocked that we have more heart disease i don't think there's any coincidence about that you know, so we must open, we must open the water. You know, that's been spoken about at this conference. You know, it needs to be running. You know, Larry Littlebird shared the story of how his grandfather, you know, 50 plus years ago, was able to tell him to prophesize that one day this water that we're drinking, and at that time the water was very clear and pure in most of New Mexico, that one day people will be walking around with little bottles of water. They'll capture this water and they'll put it in a water bottle. And that's where we are at now. And bless you for the work you're doing because you're capturing the artistic spirit, the movement, the movement of water, the circle of water I see in your work. And that's one of the things that water is so beautiful for because it makes that big cycle all the way from the earth to the sky, the top of the atmosphere and back and underneath the ground. And, you know, all of that, all those levels and dimensions of water, the way that it's moving is representative of our spirit. And we have to allow that to move, to move through us so our heart is open. And when our heart is open, then we are able to connect with all cultures and open it. So I see water as a way of opening to all ways of knowing. And frankly, I guess my bias is that I see indigenous ways of knowing also as completely inclusive and opening, and opening to all ways of knowing. So, for myself, I am listening to indigenous voices and I'm also, as much as I can, listening to the voice of the earth to guide me in whatever I want to do. And that is, that's the only thing I know, if I know anything, about leadership, because I can't understand any of the Western books on leadership. <laughs> I just, I don't quite get that, um, because I think that uh, um, leadership must be following what is already flowing. And Leon Secatero says it best. You know, he says that time is the fifth element. So in the West, people seem to think time is kept on a clock or a watch or a line, but actually it's an unfolding. And we must allow that unfolding. We must allow that unfolding and then become aware of where we are now and to be thankful. And this is the most amazing thing about indigenous peoples with all the suffering that we think, well, it's not think, that has occurred. Uh, you know, um, it's unimaginable still when the spirit is kept in people like Leon Secatero he understands that every day he prays in thankfulness for everything that has happened to bring him to this moment in time you know and then as a society as a whole we also have to be thankful for this and when we're thankful and when we, work, when we come from thankfulness, then things that we're not even thinking about or imagining or dreaming will start to unfold in a beautiful path. That's the, that's the, that's the beauty way, as far as I understand it. You know, it comes from being grateful. Not in this new age idea of abundance, abundance, but in a way of understanding that, that there is always enough. That's a big difference, you know. And, and when you come from there, 
then there can be a healing away from the way the West is looking at the, the world and being divided from it and then thinking that because we're divided from the world that, that there must be scarcity and we must grab these resources before someone else does. But we're actually, we are really all, all related and when it comes to be known inside the heart, then, then it is the right time for it to open. And that's why uh, Leon talks about how the ancient elders said that in ancient times they convened a dialogue of the holy people. And in that dialogue they said that we will, we, we have a sacred knowledge, but we're afraid that the human people will uncover it too early. So where will we put it? And then they talked for a long time. They said, let's put it on top of the mountain. And then they said, oh no, those humans are like goats. They'll climb up and they're going to they're gonna find it up there on top of the mountain. And they said, well, let's, let's put it deep inside the earth. And they said, oh no, those humans are like the ant people. They'll crawl inside the earth and they'll find out where that knowledge is. And it might not be the right time. So finally, they said, let's put it right inside their own heart. And when the time is right, and when they are ready to open, then it will open and will be healed. And I think we're almost at that time, at least the beginning of that time. I don't want to be over optimistic, but the beginning of that reopening We've come through a very tumultuous and chaotic era that was predicted and prophesized all over. And we're finally, finally starting to see the seeds of moving out of that. And so it's an exciting and wonderful time to be alive. Thank you. <laughs>